Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Bear Thoughts. This is certainly a very special episode because we have Matthew Francois, who is the founder and CEO of Antarctica Global, and they do some really interesting, fun stuff. And um, I would love for him to introduce himself. Matthew, thank you so much for giving us the time for speaking with us today, uh, and we'd love to know more about you. Thanks a lot, Lina, um, and thanks a lot for hosting me on this uh, this podcast. Um, so I'm Matthew. I'm 36 years old. I'm a father of one little boy, uh, and uh, I have spent most of my life um, in India, uh, doing many different things and writing many different stories. Um, Antarctica is the latest one, but uh, before that, there were quite a few uh, well adventures that. Uh, made me go across the country. Um, that's a summary. <laughs> and a very interesting one indeed. So uh, I'll just get into the conversation uh, and the questions that uh, we're very, very uh, keen to ask you. So, um, you know, at Bare Necessities, we tackle one portion of the waste crisis uh, by, you know, providing um, alternates to conventionally plastic formulated products, right? And we do personal care, home care and lifestyle products that are essentially uh, entirely plastic free. And um, I think you can tell that we're a very prominent uh, consumer brand and I'll come clean and let you know that we don't entirely have an understanding of tech. And we just like to let know um, how does technology combat climate change? And how is Antarctica Global developing solutions for individuals and for companies like us? And also maybe how are you championing green technology through the work that you do? So that's a good question. You may not have a deep understanding of tech, but somehow you're using tech to combat climate change. You're using tech by using um, the website that uh, you are utilizing to promote the products that you have every day. And you're using technology in many different ways every day to uh, try to combat climate climate change. Mostly also to raise your to raise awareness among uh, your community. Uh, you need the tools that technology has to uh, offer you. So technology today is a is an incredible uh, tool um, for us to combat climate change, but it can also be a terrible uh, sort of. A symptom of um, the situation that we are in, uh, because technology is also used today to uh, uh, well, uh, do some harm to uh, the environment. So the question here is more how do we use technology to do good and, and how do we sort of mitigate the effects of the technology that's not being used to do good things. Uh, so the way we are looking at it is that we need to um, act across industries today. Uh, we have a situation where if we don't want to reach so 1.5 degrees, unfortunately, according to the United Nations that, that they enacted in 2015, well, it doesn't seem to be attainable anymore, but um, uh, now there's this idea that we should like limit global warming to 2 degrees. How do we do that? We need to, uh, again, act across industries to uh, reduce carbon emissions in each and every single industry. Uh, and every action, every ton of carbon, basically, that we save from being emitted, contributes uh, to uh, limiting the risk of uh, reaching uh, two degrees. Um, what we do at Antarctica is that we build uh, technologies uh, that help planet positive uh, companies to uh, scale uh, using uh, technologies. And we do that across uh, uh, various industries like agriculture, education, transportation, waste management. Um, fundamentally, again, uh, Technology has this incredible power to scale impact. And, and, and you typically with bare necessities is an example of that. You are using technology for that. Thank you so much for that. Um, it really puts into perspective how the large role that technology plays and um, its impact in climate change and sustainability. Um, I, you know, in India especially, um, sustainability is still gaining traction, right? And um, at Bare Necessities, a debate that we often find ourselves in 
is just tackling the general perception that planet friendly solutions are very expensive and um, in your context how do technology solutions that antarctica global provides address this concern and um, can you maybe just share some ex- examples of how your green tech solutions are accessible for the indian market sure so first i want to uh, come back to one idea that that flows in the uh, well in the great public that 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 planet friendly solutions would be expensive they are not uh, fundamentally the non planet friendly solutions are expensive uh, take a, taking a flight to go to london on a holiday is expensive uh, taking your bicycle to go to work is not expensive uh, that's one planet friendly solution that i can give you where you have actually an impact as an individual on climate change uh, i can give you like a uh, hundred examples of of that kind in your personal lives where you can actually mitigate the effects of climate change by changing your habits so planet friendly solutions are not expensive that's an idea that you must find now when it comes to technology again uh, and, and especially on the indian market i mean we have an economy which is uh, booming i mean uh, for for the past 10 years we are seeing an incredible rise of uh, also the use of technology and 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 what i see at least from the community that we are in and and uh, uh, the uh, sort of growth of this economy we uh, we are seeing incredible solutions being uh, developed across the country uh, using technology so when we talk about green tech solutions again we are talking about solutions that within each industry are mitigating the effects of climate change so in transportation for example we work a lot with uh, uh, like electric vehicles companies that are doing like electric fleets like public transportation using pub- like electric buses or electric trikes or electric rickshaws etc where you need a technology to manage those fleets and to manage the batteries that are part of uh, those uh, the fleets uh, when we're talking about agriculture you have to imagine that like uh, most of the food that we consume most of the time is imported uh, we need to fight against that by bringing back agriculture in our cities and for that like there are many uh, new ways of doing that and again uh, what we are seeing in india is that across industries um, many of those solutions exist and we come as a help to build those uh, technologies that uh, those planet positive uh, ventures uh, are requiring um so our services are mostly b2b oriented when it comes to our services um because they are uh, oriented to companies uh, who are providing solutions to uh, uh well uh, people of the cities or the, the countryside for that matter yeah does that make sense <laughs> no it does it does and you're right it is a myth that we all are working collectively to break that plant friendly solutions and sustainable solutions aren't that expensive um and you know i recently read a study that estimated that powerful language models like chat gpt right emit around 8.4 tons of carbon dioxide a year and the training models guzzles about 700,000 liters of fresh water and um, as you know chat gpt is becoming increasingly ubiquitous and learning models like that are becoming ever so common right um but the environment angle of it no one really talks about and um, it's kind of downplayed and i wanted to ask you how we can ensure that green solutions are maybe prioritized when we develop new technologies and how do you uh, address this particular ex- aspect with your clients those are very good questions um the first question that you ask about how do we prioritize um green solutions when we uh, build new technologies <laughs> unfortunately that's tricky and that's a mindset uh which is not a common mindset today ai as an example because you mentioned chat gpt uh, ai today is mostly uh and and for its near future going to be used to uh, maximize uh, profits and uh, increase margins on uh, operations and so you will probably see the use of ai or you will actually not see it as a as a as a sort of like consumer but rather we'll see the effects of it that that um, it will increase consumption of things that we don't necessarily need uh, so probably creams from l'oreal that, uh, that 
we will get to, to buy more, um, mostly because AI has this power. Um, now, AI can also be used for uh, great uh, sort of solutions as well. Um, but it's a matter of who is using uh, that technology and how are we using it. So the way that um, we are addressing this um, at Antarctica is that one, we try to raise awareness on the um, cost of a technology, the environmental cost of a technology, which means that we um, calculate the emissions that those tech giants are emitting uh, with their services. Um, and we raise awareness by publishing those numbers and publishing those like this, the pedagogy behind understanding why a language like ChatGPT is such a consuming uh, language in terms of uh, carbon dioxide. The same goes with uh, the Bitcoins like uh, the cryptocurrencies or any technology for that matter that we have seen uh, rising for the past uh, couple of decades. Um, so education is a major part of our, uh, of our job um, in, in raising awareness and then in using those technologies uh, every day again across industries uh, to uh, transit uh, to a decarbonized society. Um, that's again, that, that should be the, uh, uh, the, the compass for any company out there to think how do I get to a decarbonized society and how do I contribute to getting to a decarbonized society? Yeah. Uh, you know, actually speaking along those lines, um, you know, at Bear Necessities, um, we work in the zero waste space and uh, we ship a lot of orders every day, right? And uh, therefore, we try to minimize our carbon footprint as much as possible. And for us, carbon footprint is actually something quite tangible. <laughs> and right. um, yep. On the tech perspective, I wanted to understand, um, I noticed that um, you take the digital route, right, to mitigate the effects of climate change. Um, however, there is this kind of lack of information surrounding digital carbon footprint. Um, and there are some reports that, in fact, even Immaculate shared with me, which said that the aviation industry adds to 2% of the global carbon emissions, while the software industry adds to 3%. And um, it's quite difficult to imagine why the software industry emits more um, uh, carbon emissions than the aviation industry. And in this kind of context, can you explain why um, it's important to understand uh, the effects of carbon footprint and um, how Antarctica Global tackles this? Yes, um, very interesting question as well. When you, and, and, and it's it's a great example what you're giving with bare necessities and I, I, I really love what you guys are doing and I like the, the fact that you are going very far in, 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 in the, the concept. Um, when I'm surfing on bare necessities.in, um, I am consuming carbon myself as a user, as a consumer. Uh, without even purchasing anything from your website. Um, when we are recording this, this podcast right now, we are consuming carbon. And, and obviously the question is how, why, like what's, how is that like somehow tangible? Well, let me try to make it uh, a bit simple. Um, when we are recording this, uh, this podcast, uh, currently I'm in France uh, with my family. Um, the question is where is the emission uh, occurring? Um, there's an entire network infrastructure required to power this call. Um, there are devices, there's an infrastructure and there are data centers. And those are the, pretty much like the three main components that um, are the places where we emit carbon when we are talking about the ICT industry, which is the information and communication uh, technology uh, industry. This industry that, as you mentioned, is actually nearly 4% uh, of the global emissions rather than three and uh, twice the aviation sector. So the user devices, the mobile phone that we use or like the website, or the websites that are powered by laptops uh, that, that we use to consult uh, those websites or any application that we interact with on an everyday basis, that represents about 63% of the emissions. The network infrastructure means that all the tools, the components that are between you and uh, the uh, website that you are uh, visiting or the application that you are interacting with, 
and that counts to about 23%. And the data centers, we talk a lot about those data centers, that's again very few, it's about 13% of uh, the emissions. But those three uh, components have a huge impact ultimately. Um, as we said, again, twice the aviation sector, it's absolutely massive. And what we again try to, uh, to, to do at Antarctica is raise awareness on uh, those numbers and, and especially on, on the usage that we make of the software that we interact with on an everyday basis. Well, we'll probably get to talk about that a bit later, but like when you interact with Instagram, when you are posting a photo on Instagram, when you're consulting a website and like buying something on uh, bare necessities, you have again an impact. What we are able to do, and because we have an entire uh, research center at Antarctica, where we are able to calculate in real time according to the source of electricity that is powering the infrastructure that you depend on, we are able to calculate the real time emissions due to your usage of the software and the devices that you are uh, actually uh, using. Again, just to uh, uh, finish on that particular point. Right now you are in India. In India, it's mostly uh, like the electricity mix is mostly powered by coal mining. Uh, when in France, for instance, it's mostly nuclear plants. The nuclear plants are way less consuming in terms of uh, carbon emissions than the coal mines. Um, this has an impact on uh, the uh, calculation that we make of the carbon dioxide uh, that is being emitted with uh, the interactions I have with the software that I'm interacting with on a daily basis. So that's, I'm, I'm, I know that it's hard to picture because it's, it's, it's very non-tangible, but it does have a real impact uh, when you actually uh, look at it, uh, well, at, at scale, uh, the number, like the thousands and thousands of people consulting the same website, like this becomes very representative and very substantial. I mean, thank you so much for kind of breaking it down. It's definitely a lot easier for me to understand it now than I did before I asked you the question. And um, I read about your browser extension Pebble, uh, which aims to reduce the environmental and internet in, environmental impact and the internet usage. Um, so I have two questions here. So the first one is, can you explain the problem of internet's carbon footprint and why it's so concerning? It's uh, very similar to what you just mentioned. And the second question is, how does Pebble help folks like me, for example, contribute to a more eco-friendly internet experience? Sure. Um, okay, let's talk about something as simple as what we commonly use as a word like the cloud. Uh, you know, when we, we talk about the cloud, that's where you store the photos that you take with your iPhone or with your uh, Android phone, uh, your emails on your Gmail uh, are on the cloud, the posts that you have on Instagram are on the cloud, the series that you are watching on Netflix are on the cloud, the conversations that you're having on LinkedIn uh, are on the cloud. So all these uh, activities that you have as a consumer, uh, they are stored on the cloud. Today, in 2024, um, there were in the airline, the commercial airline industry, 22.2 million flights uh, that happen. The cloud emits more global GAG emissions than the entire number of flights that we have annually. So the cloud is, is in terms of equivalences, is massively uh, impacting uh, climate change. A single data center that we talk about, we talk about lots of data centers, that's the equivalent of 500,000 sorry, <coughs> uh, 50, homes in terms of the electricity consumed. Um, those are massive uh, sort of numbers that we're talking about. Uh, the energy required to power uh, those data centers or any of those infrastructures that we depend on um, is uh, what uh, what we need to sort of be aware of. And what Pebble does is that it raises your awareness on that. Because that's the very first step to action. 
I'm definitely not with Pepper trying to blame you for using Netflix. You should be allowed when you go back from work to watch a series on Netflix. But Netflix should have the responsibility to act on their carbon emissions. And if the users, if the consumers are not aware of that, they cannot ask for accounts, like for like ownership of the responsibility to those tech giants. And the tech giants today, well, because we are not as users, as consumers, that much aware of our carbon emissions, well, they don't do as much as they could uh, to mitigate uh, their carbon emissions. And that's what Pebble does. We are getting a new uh, version of Pebble in the coming quarter, uh, which is going to be way more centered around our digital habits and how we can sort of be more mindful about our digital habits. But fundamentally, the ones that should act uh, on this are those that are providing us with those services. And for that, we need to be aware so that we can ask them to do something about that. Yeah, that's, that's what Pebble does. It's a wonderful answer and uh, it's really got me thinking about uh, the relationships that we all hold with the internet, right? And um, ultimately, who is accountable um, for the ultimate impact that these um, platforms generate and um, I'm very excited to try the new version of Pebble that will come out soon yeah. um, and just to you know quickly shift gears um, we have a really young team at Bare Necessities and um, I came to notice that Adaptica Global has a fairly young team too and I wanted to ask you if this was a deliberate choice and why did you think it was important to do so? Um, it's not a deliberate choice, to be honest. Um, I, we have received, I think, over 60,000 applications uh, at Antarctica since, we, uh, since our inception. I have never looked at any personal criteria when we hire someone. I don't care about your age, your gender, your religion, anything. I don't even care about your past experience. I care about whether you understand what climate change is or not. Because if you do, then we are on the same side and we can move together much faster on our mission. That's all I care for. That's incredibly profound. Um, and before I let you go, um, what are some actionable steps that uh, we can take in our daily lives uh, that, to reduce our carbon footprint, like Matthew's five hacks? So the first, very first thing that you should do is calculate your carbon footprint, your personal carbon footprint. The United Nations in 2015 with the Paris Agreements uh, enacted that by 2050, uh, we should be uh, consuming 2.5 tons of carbon uh, maximum per individual. So that's, that will be our quota. In our countries, whether in India or in France, um, we are approximately at a 10 tons of carbon uh, a year uh, with what we, whatever we do in our lives, the flights that we take to go on a holiday, the, the meat that we consume, the, uh, the habits that we have, like with the consumption of like, goods and, and, and any kind of sort of activities that we have. Reducing that uh, by five times is a huge task. Um, but being aware of where we start from is the very first step. So you should calculate every year your carbon footprint and see if there is an evolution or not. It sort of like makes you more mindful of um, where you stand. And again, don't blame yourself. It's, it's it never sort of look at it negatively. It's a, it's a very interesting activity to change habits. Like there are things that, uh, that, that, that come at some point very naturally. Um, uh, I've been vegetarian now for 15 years. I mean, I don't even like, like question uh, why I would not be. Uh, um, I don't take flights anymore, like for any uh, holidays, like it, it's, it's fine. I prefer to take the train or to, 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 to just like walk. I, am, I do a lot of expeditions, but it doesn't change my life. It, it actually changed the prism by which I see my life and, and, and where my priorities lie. So again, and when it comes to technology, because I, I do want to give a few tips on that, but like the, the, the digital habits that we have, we can always do uh, small, small uh, things that, that, that 
contribute to making you more mindful of um, your own uh, behaviors um, when it comes to, 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 to your sort of impact uh, uh, from a carbon perspective. Uh, when you're watching uh, videos on uh, YouTube, uh, well, reviews the uh, image quality. Uh, it's fine if it's not like 4K. It's fine if it's only 720p. It's, it's completely fine. You will see the exact same show or the exact same video, but it does have a massive impact on the carbon emissions that um, that, that you're seeing. Uh, turn off the autoplay on all these uh, streaming platforms. Try to use Wi-Fi over mobile data because Wi-Fi is way less consuming than uh, mobile data in terms of electricity, uh, take fewer selfies as well because you will actually store less data on our data centers. Those are like small tips. And again, as I mentioned with, with Pepper, we have an entire sort of like resource center which is going to help you sort of get those kind of habits. But those are typical um, sort of examples that I would give from a digital standpoint of what you can do to, uh, to be more mindful and to, to again raise this awareness among yourself and uh, your friends and, and families. It was wonderful and uh, I'm going to try and implement as many as I can. Um, and thank you really, thank you so much uh, Matthew for speaking with me today. Uh, it's truly been an insightful conversation. Um, I hope you've had a good time chatting as well. Um, yes, it was wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And uh, with that, we come to the end of this episode. Thank you so much, everyone.